Hi everyone and welcome to Imogen Sherd's Makeup Lesson. We know that it is difficult to remember everything we teach you during your consult, so we have put together a quick and easy step-by-step -step lesson for you to refer back to when in doubt. Step 1 is your foundation. There is the cream finish foundation and the fluid finish. Depends what coverage you would like, but if you would like a thicker coverage, use your cream finish. If you would like a lighter finish on your skin, use the fluid finish. to be using a cream finish today. If you're using a cream finish, use a sponge. If you're using liquid, you can just use your fingers. Apply the foundation over the whole face, starting from the forehead, into the hairline, over the eyelids, over the cheeks, and quite far down the neckline. Step 2 is your concealer. It is better to use your concealer brush to apply your concealer, however if you would prefer you can just use your finger. Start by applying underneath the eye if there are any dark rings. Don't only apply underneath the eye but into the little groove between your nose and your eye and over the eyelid up to the brow. Your concealer can also be used to hide any blemishes or pigmentation marks that might still be showing through. Notice that we apply the concealer after your foundation and not before. This is because the concealer ends up getting wiped away if you apply your foundation afterwards. A nice trick of the trade is also to apply your concealer into any fine lines or wrinkles as this makes them appear lighter and less severe. The trick is to use your big powder brush to apply your powder rather than a sponge. A sponge will make your powder look caked, so take the biggest brush out of your makeup brush set and apply your powder over your skin. The next brush in your brush set is for blusher. Don't get your powder brush and blusher brush confused. The blusher brush is the smaller size. Remember that using the right color blusher for your undertone is very important. Today we will be using corals as Lorraine is a spring. If you are in autumn, you can use bronzers. If you are a winter or a summer, you can use pinky tones on your skin. Start your blush from the ear under the cheekbone in a straight line towards the nose and up onto the cheekbone in a V. Also take your blusher up onto your forehead and down onto your jawline because blusher not only contours your cheekbones but contours your whole face. What you end up doing is a number three from the forehead down onto the cheek and down onto the jawline. It is usually best to fill your eyebrows in with your little angled brush and a matte brown eyeshadow available in your eyeshadow palette. Always remember the two rules with eyebrows. The first is if you hold a brush from the corner of your nose to the corner of your eye, your brow should end in line. The second rule is that your brow should be as dark or one shade darker than the darkest piece in your hair. These first five steps are important whether you're doing a day look or an evening look. To finish off a day look, you'd simply add mascara and lip gloss and to complete an evening look, you would carry on with your eyeshadow. Step six is your eyeshadow. In your brush set, these three brushes are specific for eyeshadow. Take your biggest brush out of the three and apply your highlighter over the whole eye, right up into the brow and right down to the lash line. Use your medium sized brush to apply your actual color. I like to use a combination of the last two shades in your eyeshadow palette, irrespective of whether you are cool or warm undertones. Now apply that color in the shape of a C from the outside half of the eye about three quarter way in and down to meet the lash line. A good indication of where to put it is where your eyeball meets your brow bone. If your eyes are slightly overhung, remember to take your C a little bit higher than you usually would so that when you open your eyes you can still see the color. Then take your biggest brush out of the three, the same brush that you applied your highlighter with and blend. You will also use your blender and highlighter brush to fill in your C with a lighter color. In this case, we used a beautiful bronze. Eyeliner is a great way to define your lash line. 
Brown is generally a good color for most skin tones. Remember that black is quite severe on anyone other than a winter, and blues and greens can end up looking gaudy, so neutrals the trick are best. to getting a straight line is to pull your lid slightly out to the side. If you still battle to get it in a straight line, take your little angled brush, a bit of brown eyeshadow, and do upward flicks over the eyeliner into the rest of the shadow. When you are doing your eyeliner underneath the eye, remember to keep it as close to the lash line as possible. Eyeliner can have a knack of making your eyes look smaller if you put it in the wrong place. Then take your smallest brush out of the three, the same brown eyeshadow you did your C with, and join the color underneath the eye to soften the eyeliner. You can then take the same color you did the inside of your C with and join it underneath the eye. Step 7. Mascara You need to use as much mascara as possible as it definitely defines your eyes. Try and take the brush as close to the root of the lash as possible and work your way in upward motions to the rest of the lash. While the lashes are drying, we're going to move on to step 8, which is your lip colour. I personally prefer to use lip liner and lipstick, as it definitely helps your lip colour stay on longer. What you need to do though, is fill your whole lip in with the lip liner and not just the outside. We're going to finish our look with a touch of lip gloss, as it really plumps up the lips. Applying mascara to the bottom lashes is just as important as applying it to the top. It completes the whole look. Voila, our look is done. We hope that this tutorial has allowed you to realize that makeup can be simple, quick and fun.